Good day, students. In behalf of your teachers, I welcome you back to another learning video in Mathematics 8. I am Teacher Isa, the one who will be with you in our discussion about relation and function. Through this learning video, we are expected to differentiate a relation from a function, identify the domain and the range of a relation, and determine whether a relation is a function or not. Our lives are filled with different situations in which we encounter relationships between two sets. Before we go to the mathematical concept on relations, let us first analyze the following examples. First, to each car, there corresponds a license plate. Next, the government plans to implement that to every aspiring student, there should be 10 trees that they need to plant. And lastly, 30 pieces of eggs fits in one tray. For us to apply the different mathematical concepts of relationships to different fields, we must take the idea of relation bounded between two sets. The situation that we will discuss next will help us with that. Riza decided to make it a habit to save 10 pesos from her allowance starting today. Let us help Riza know how much her total savings is after a certain number of days by completing the table projected. Here's the table that we are going to use to help Riza. In the first day, she would save she will save 10 pesos. In the second day, she will save 20 pesos. In the third day, she will save 30 pesos. I hope you see a pattern. Therefore, in the fourth day, how much will be saved? Mm -hmm. It is 40 pesos. In five days, how much would she be able to save? Mm -hmm. That would be 50 pesos. And in the sixth day, she would save a total of 60 pesos. This particular scenario is an example of a relation. Why is it so? Because it shows a pairing or a correspondence between two quantities. But which quantities are paired? One is paired to 10, two is paired to 20, three is paired to 30, and so on and so forth. In other words, it is a set of ordered pairs. How do we make the pairing into ordered pairs? The ordered pairs would then look like this. 1, 10, 2, 20, 3, 30. What about the next? Okay, 4, 40. 550 and lastly 660 
all the numbers you see under number of days, specifically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, are called our first elements. And these first elements make up what we call the domain. Every first element is an input value and it is an independent variable. On the other hand, all numbers that you see or all quantities that we see below total savings, namely 10 pesos, 20 pesos, 30 pesos, 40 pesos, 50 pesos, and 60 pesos, are what we call the second elements. And each of these elements is an output value or a dependent variable. Collectively, these elements is known as the range. Let me repeat that for you. The domain of a relation is the set of all first elements. And the range of a relation is the set of all second elements. Thus, the domain of this relation is the set whose elements are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And the range of this relation is the set of elements 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Moving further, a relation can be any of the following correspondence. 1 to 1, 1 to many, or many to 1. Let us now illustrate a 1 to 1 relation. In a 1 to 1 relation, each element in the domain is paired to exactly one element in the range. Remember, the domain of a relation is the collection of all the elements in the first set. And the range of this relation, or the range of any relation for that matter, is the collection of all the elements in the second set. So, for this to become a one-to-one -one relation, do we see that each element in the domain has exactly one pair in the range? Mm-hmm. Roy's student ID number is 258. Maria's student, uh, I mean, Maria's student number is, student ID number is 027. Jose's is 154. Corazon's is 832. Did we hear a repetition? No. Therefore, this illustrates a one-to-one -one relation. Now, let us write the domain and the range. The domain has the elements Roy, Maria, Jose, and Corazon. The range has the elements 2580271548322. Oh, wait. That's supposed to be a closed bracket. So, what do you what did you observe when I was writing the domain and the range? We were just actually 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Writing the elements inside the open and close brackets. Now, I have a question. Can we interchange the possession or the order of the elements? Yes, we can do that. It doesn't matter as long as you place every element that you see here inside the correct pair of brackets. In a many-to-one relation, at least two elements from the domain are paired to one element in the range. Thus, in which set do we see a repetition? Is it from the domain or from the range? In the domain, name of student, we have the elements joy, whose average is 94, Joe, whose average is 94, Emmanuel, whose average is 92, Greg, whose average is 92, and Jenny, whose average is 92. Under the range, the elements are 1.5 and 4. These are all under rank. This particular scenario happens in real life. How is that so? Joy and Joe are ranked 1.5. Emmanuel's rank is 4. Greg's rank is 4. And Jenny's rank is also 4. Now, do you already see where the repetition happens? If not, let me put it more clearly for you. Joy, 1.5. Joe, 1.5. Emmanuel, 4. Greg, 4. And Jenny, 4. The repetition happens in the range. Thus, the description for a many-to-one relation fits our particular example. At least two elements from the domain are paired to one element in the range. At least two elements from the domain are paired to one element in the range. Let us now write the domain and the range of this relation. The domain has the elements Joy 94, Joe 94, Emmanuel 92, Greg 92, and Jenny 92. The range, on the other hand, has the elements 1.5 and 4. Here now is the illustration for many-to-one relation. Lastly, one-to-many relation. In a one-to-many relation, one element in the domain is paired with at least two elements in the range. One element in the domain, one element in the domain, flower, sampagita, nara, orchid, pine tree, mahogany, is paired to at least two elements in the range. So, we have here one element in the domain, three, is paired to at least two elements in the range, three is paired to nara, three is paired to pine tree, and three is paired to 
mahogany. It is the reverse of the many-to-one relation. For this relation, the domain includes the elements flower and tree, while the range includes the elements sampagita, nara, orchid, pine tree, and mahogany. Let's continue. A relation can be represented in many ways. To illustrate each and differentiate these ways, let us consider the following situation. An average adult generates about 4 kilograms of waste daily. Present the relation of the number of adults affecting the amount of waste generated daily. For us to be able to present the relation of the number of adults affecting the amount of waste generated daily, we need to convert this statement into an equation. So, we need to have representations. Based from this, what representations should we have? Hmm. Average adult and kilograms of waste daily. So, okay, let's first analyze. Which should happen first? Do we have an adult first or a person first before waste is generated? Or do we have waste generated first before their before an adult or a person is produced. Mm -hmm. There should be an adult producing the waste and not the other way around. Not the waste generating a person. Therefore, we should have our X and Y quantities. Wherein, X represents the number of adults adults and y is the amount of generated waste daily okay why was i talking about which should happen first the adult or the uh, waste generated because we need to consider here what we call the independent and the dependent variables. Usually, the independent variable is represented by the variable x, while the dependent variable is represented by the variable y. Thus, in this representation, it means that the amount of generated waste daily depends depends on the number of adults. The amount of waste generated daily depends on the number of adults. Thus, this is the dependent variable while the other one is the independent variable. So, let us now form our working equation for the relation. Mm -hmm. The amount of waste generated daily, y, is equal to the number of adults in a certain community. And according to this information, an adult produces an average of 4 kilograms of waste daily. Is that too much? Is that too much? Yes. 
So what do we do with 4? We're going to multiply that with x. Here now is the relation representing the situation. y is equal to 4x. Now, what if we are asked to draw the graph of this relation? How do we do that? Mm -hmm. Recall what we have done with linear equations in two variables in the first grading period. What should we have first so that we can construct or so that we can draw the graph? We need the table of values first. So, here it is. Remember, x means the number of adults, y, the variable y, means the amount of waste generated daily in kilograms. So, using our equation here, if we have one adult, how much waste does he or she generate in a day? It's 4 times 1 which is equal to 4. If we have two adults, that would be 4 times 2 equals 8. 3 adults, 12. 4 adults, 16. 5 adults, 20. 6 adults, 24. And so on and so forth. Now, from this table of values, we can now construct or draw the graph. How does the graph look like? It looks like this. Here now is the graph of y is equal to 4x. But how were we able to draw this graph? Remember, 1, 4 is actually an ordered pair where 1 is located along the x-axis while 4 is located along the y-axis. Thus, the point represented by the ordered pair 1, 4 is this point. Next, 2, 8 is this point. 3, 12 is this point. While 4, 16 is this point here. I have a question. Why is it that we only have the first quadrant in our Cartesian plane? We don't have the second, the third, and the fourth. It is because no negative values for x nor for y are allowed. Do we have a negative number of persons? Of course not. Do we have a negative number of amount, gen, amount, amount of waste generated? Of course not. We only consider the first quadrant. Next question. Why is it that we have an arrowhead pointing upwards? Can the number of adults increase? And the number of amount of waste generated also increase? Yes, that is why the arrowhead pointing upward is present. Let's continue. What are the coordinates of this point here? It is... It is 1, 4. 
Next. Okay, let me name them. Okay. What are the coordinates of point B? The coordinates are 2, 8. Let's proceed with the coordinates of point C. Mm -hmm. 3, 12. And lastly, what about the coordinates of point D? The coordinates of point D are 4, 16. These ordered pairs could actually be seen from the graph and from the table of values. And if we place these ordered pairs inside an open and close, a pair of open and close brackets, we now have a set of ordered pairs. Next. Is there another way of presenting these numbers or these data? There is. How do we call it? We call it a diagram mapping. So, let us have the diagram mapping for this relation. Here it is. Here now is the diagram mapping showing the relationship of the number of adults to the amount of waste they generate daily. 1 to 4, 2 to 8, 3 to 12, and 4 to 16. All of these are actually the ways of presenting a relation. How are they called? Equation. This one, table of values. Below the table of values, we have here the set of ordered pairs. Next, we have the graph. And lastly, we have its diagram mapping. Let us have a self-reflection at the moment. Is 4 kilograms of waste generated daily by an adult or by any person too much? I think it is. Imaginein mo ha, sa isang araw, apat na kilong basura ang naproproduce mo? Paano na lang sa isang household na may tatlong anak mga at dal, syempre yung mga magulang lima limang tao sa isang household times four how many kilograms of waste yon sa isang araw? 20 kilograms okay isang bahay lang yon sa isang araw what more kung i-add mo yung waste na nage-generate ng kapitbahay mo? At yung waste na nage-generate no, kapit-bahay ng kapit-bahay mo. I-add pa natin dyan yung waste na nage-generate no, kapit-bahay ng kapit-bahay ng kapit-bahay mo. And so on and so forth. I think, I believe, that is too much. Challenge sa isang araw. Lahat ng basura mo, or maglagay ka, mag ka dito ng eco bag. Lahat ng basura mo, uh, liquid man yan, solid man yan, ilagay mo doon. Mabibigat ang kaya? Eh, paano pag pinagpatong-patong lahat yun sa, sa dump site? Sino bang nagkikerry nun? Di ba si Mother Earth? Hindi kaya siya nabibigatan? Check mo. Take note that if we are being asked to describe what kind of relation or correspondence is shown, it is easiest to do that if we have a diagram mapping. What are again the kinds of correspondence for a relation? We have 
one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-one. What about the different ways of uh, describing or illustrating a relation? We have the diagram mapping, the graph, a set of ordered pairs, table of values, and the equation or the rule. As we continue to explore relationships between two quantities, you will find out that there is a special kind of relation called function. The concept of functions is one big idea in mathematics. Let's find out what a function is through the next situation. Blood relations are highly valued by Filipinos. Children are taught to love, respect, and care for their parents, grandparents, and other relatives. Teresa, Tomasa, Amelia, and Soledad are sisters. Their children are listed opposite their names. Take a look at the diagram maps. All right. Let us first recall the correspondence of relations. We have here the first relation. Pairing, Totoy to Mother Teresa. Tintin to Mother Teresa and Nene to her mother, Teresa. What kind of correspondence is shown? It is many to one. Next relation. We have the child Bugoy to his mother, Tomasa. What kind of correspondence is that? It is one to one. And last relation, we have the child Romana and the mothers. We have the child Juana and the mothers, Amelia and Soledad. What kind of relation is it? It is one to many. Based from these diagram maps and these pairing or correspondence, it is only the many to one and one to one relations that show relations that are functions. Why is that so? Because a function is a relation such that each element of the domain corresponds to exactly one element of the range. In other words, a function is a relation such that no two ordered pairs have the same first element or x coordinate based from the given definitions why are the first and second relations considered relations that are functions each element in the domain is paired to exactly one element in the range. No first element is repeated. Isn't that so? Yes. Toy, to, to, toy, Teresa. Tintin, Teresa. Nene, Teresa. Did you hear me repeat any element from the first set? No. So, it's a function. 
What about the second relation? No, I mean, every element in the domain is a paired to exactly one element in the range. Bugoy from the first set or from the domain, Tomasa from the range. Did you hear me repeat an element from the domain? No. So, why is it that the third relation does not illustrate a relation that is a function? In other words, why is it that the third relation is not a function? Remember, no element from the domain should be repeated. Juana, Amelia. Juana, Soledad. Did you hear me repeat saying an element from the domain? Yes, I hope you heard me. What element did I repeat saying from the domain? It is Juana. And if we put this in real life, Juana cannot have two biological mothers. Thus, that relation is not a function. It's time for us to determine whether the given sets of relation are functions or not. Let's start with set A. Set A is given as a set of ordered pairs. The ordered pairs are 0, negative 5, 1, negative 4, 2, negative 3, 3, negative 2, 4, negative 1, and 5, 0. Is there a first element that is repeated? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is there? No, there isn't. Therefore, is this a function or not? It is a function. What about set B? Let's read. Negative 1, negative 7, 1, 0, 2, negative 3, 0, negative 8, 0, 5, and negative 2, negative 1. Do we see a first element that is repeated? There is. That first element is 0. Since there is an element in the domain which has two pairs in the range, do we have a function or not? Mm -hmm. This is not a function. Let's try to illustrate set A as a diagram map and find out what kind of correspondence is shown. 0, negative 5, 1 to negative 4, 2 to negative 3, 3 to negative 2, 4 to negative 1, and 5 to 0. Take note, this is just a rough diagram map. What kind of correspondence is shown? It is the one-to-one -one correspondence. What if we have set B and we only concentrate with the ordered pairs with the repeated elements? We have zero is to negative eight and again zero is paired to five. What kind of correspondence? It is one to many. There is a clue here. If the correspondence is one to one, it's a function. Whereas, if the correspondence is one to many, it is not a function. Next sets. The set of appliances. 
namely turbo broiler, microwave oven, refrigerator, washing machine, and TV set with their sale prices. 8,000, 12,000, 14,000, 14,000, 18,000 pesos respectively. Is this relation a function or not? Does each element in the domain have exactly one pair in the range? The answer is yes. For every appliance, there corresponds a sale price. Mm, you might wonder, what about refrigerator to 14,000 and washing machine to 14,000? Is the element 14,000 found from the domain or the range? It's found from the range. If there is a repeated element in the range, it does not matter as long as there is no repeated element in the domain. Therefore, this is a function. Let's move on. Over time to the rate. 20 hours is to 1,200. 25 hours is to 1,500. 25 hours is to 1,800. 25 hours is to 2,100. And 35 hours is to 2,500. Is there an element in the domain which is repeated? Yes, there is. And what element is that? 25 hours. You might ask, hmm, the same overtime hours but different rates? How could that be? Maybe because they are of different positions or these persons come from different companies. So, is this a function or not? This is not a function. Okay, let's determine what kind of correspondence is shown. First, what kind of correspondence is this? This is many to one. Concentrate again on these two pairs. What about in here? We have one, two, many. Look at this one. One, two, many. And again, many to one function and one to many not a function. This time, let us analyze if given graphs are graphs of functions or not. Let's start with graph A. We are going to make use of what we call the vertical line test. And what does the vertical line test do? If a vertical line, if an imaginary vertical line passes through the graph at only one point anywhere in the graph, therefore, the graph is the graph of a function. But if an imaginary vertical line passes through the graph at more than one point, therefore, that is the graph Therefore, that is not the graph of a function. So, let us say this is the imaginary vertical line. If we place or draw a vertical line anywhere in the graph, in that vertical line touches the graph, at exactly one point, therefore, that is the graph of a function. Therefore, is graph A a function or not? 
It is the graph of a function. What about the graph in B? Okay, let us see. In how many points did the vertical line touch the graph? Mm. It only passed the graph once. Therefore, is this the graph of a function or not? This is the graph of a function is wrong. Why is that so? Because at this area, the vertical line passed through the graph more than once. Thus, this is not a function. The vertical line passed through the graph twice. Twice, 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 once is actually wrong. Why not? Because the arrowhead here tells us that that is extended. So actually, this vertical line passed through the graph twice. And lastly, graph. C. Without this, kindly tell me if this is a function or not. This is the graph that shows a relation that is not a function. Anywhere in the graph, a vertical line would pass through more than once. All in all, a relation that is a function is a correspondence that is either one-to-one -one or many-to-one. It is not a function when the correspondence is one-to-many. And take note, all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions. So, for a functional world, let us make our relations better. Congratulations, students! Another set of treasures has been added to your learning box. See you again next time for another set of lessons. Bye.